Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. What we're going to look at today is something that has uh, appeared in QST a number of years ago, a very interesting idea. And um, since it's been picked up by a few manufacturers, before we jump into looking at what's on my desk here, I'd like to pay a special thanks to John KC4LZN, who is my newest patron uh, as of today. And I want to say thank you very much. You too can become a patron of this channel by going to uh, patreon.com slash ke0og. Now there was a little timer up there that talked about, or that there was a little timer up there that showed how many seconds we spent on this little advertisement. It's not very many. So thank you for listening. Okay, let's dive in and see what's on the desk. Okay, first of all, it makes use of something that you see once in a while that's very interesting. These are uh, generically sometimes called hamsticks. Actually, hamstick is a registered trademark. So MFJ calls these ham tenna whips. <clears throat> it's vertical for mobile use. It's heavily loaded. Okay, and what I call the stinger, which is this aluminum part here, screws in right here so that this is a, uh, how you adjust it is by uh, loosening up this a little bit and pushing this in and out. Okay, and uh, the thing about these, the verticals, okay, and the trade off that you make with these short, heavily loaded verticals is that um, they only cover part of the band. Okay, that's the trade off when you shorten things. And you may say, where is the loading? Well, if you look in here, you see how there's a bump. Okay, it's loosely wound around the core, and then you get up to here, and you can see if you look really, really, really closely, that this is a coil where things are wound very, very close together. That is the loading coil, okay? Now, the way these work on cars is you attach this end to a mount uh, that connects to your car's trunk lid or something like that, and uh, you use the chassis of the car as your counterpoise, and then you've got this vertical whip. And they do work very well. They do work for HF. This one happens to be for 20 meters. Okay, now somebody came up with the idea, what if you put this horizontally, what have you got? You've got half a dipole. Well, let's get another one of these, also 20 meters, and put them like this, and what have you got? You've got a whole dipole, okay? And it's very small. The only thing is you need some sort of a mount for these things to screw into, and therein comes the interesting part. First of all, let's look over here on the screen. This is the mount that MFJ sells. The mount itself is $139.95. Now it has room for eight of these. That means four complete dipoles, okay? Uh, these are um, ferrite cores around this because this is unbalanced and this is by its nature balanced, okay? Now the problem that I had when, that I ran into with this they sent me this to evaluate some years ago, is you see this is a piece of aluminum and it's bent over and there's a hole that's been drilled and a mount put in and you can screw those hamsticks in there. Now why are there eight of these things? Well, if we look at it, it's just like a fan dipole. If this is 80 and this is 40 and this is 20, and this is 15, when you put RF energy into here on a appropriate handband, 
all of the and the other three antennas look like high impedances. Okay, so it only uses the correct uh, antenna. Um, now, this thing, well, let's go back here so I can get the description. Description, here we go. Okay, you can mix and match any four bands and you can buy these things with the, um, the sticks for there, okay. Now, they say ham stick right here in their um, stuff. With that, It's not uh, capitalized or with a trademark or anything, but they don't call their own ham sticks, okay. Now, um, this will mount in their version on any mast up to one inch in diameter. Now, the problem I ran into with this was bending. Um, the thing, I was trying to take it down and it came down a little fast and the ham sticks themselves are flexible, but it bent all of these up. Now these are connected by stiff wires inside and it, it's open in the bottom and that caused uh, this thing to bend up, that flange to bend up. So other manufacturers jumped in to make better hubs, one of them being, being Chameleon. Now they used to have one that was eight-sided, but they went down to this quad. So you can get two bands. So here's a ham stick on one band, another ham stick on the same band. Makes a nice dipole. Here's a ham stick on one band. Here's a ham stick on the same band, a different band from this. Makes a dipole. So let's take a look at the actual product. This comes from uh, Chameleon, was sent to me for review. What you have here is the actual mounting thing. That's steel, okay? And this is a formed cast, I guess cast, a steel bottom with a cover for it, okay? And it would mount like this because the bottom here accepts these little screws with washers and lock washers and they have a hex opening on the top and holds this in a, this is aluminum, in a very sturdy manner and you have two you can choose between these. Now let's take a look at something. Remember the MFJ said it had uh, one inch. This right here will go up to an inch and a quarter and this right here will go up to Ah, oh, you'd really be squeezing it at an inch and three quarter. You might want to go for an inch and five eighths, something like that. This hardware works on either one of these, okay? These are basically, if I remember correctly, uh, number 10, uh, 20 threads per inch. And it's fairly easy to get uh, hardware for that at a, a Home Depot or something. Let me show you what's inside this fancy thing. First of all, let me mention the price, $84. So it's less expensive and more sturdy than the MFJ one. Now, let me cut this out. Okay, I'm going to take these out. You don't have to do this, by the way. Now, one thing I will note that if you are in a climate where there are wide temperature swings and it's humid, you will get water inside of this. Now the way that happens is when it cools, the air pressure goes down in here and no matter how tightly you seal it, it will suck air into it. And if it's humid air, it will deposit water uh, as it continues to cool. And then when it gets warm, it will expel the air and the water is condensed on the bottom and eventually it will fill this thing up over time. So what you want to do, and this does it to some extent with these screws, but you want to eventually, you'll have to drill a small pilot hole in there, I'd say no bigger than an eighth of an inch, and that allows the thing to breathe so you don't get water 
And remember, that was a real problem when I was in the Air Force with our radar parts. They'd get water inside, no matter how hard the airmen tried to, to uh, uh, seal them. Okay, here is the center. The center goes to this and this. So these two hamsticks look red, red, okay, 20, 20. You fed each side of it. This goes from the outside of the SO239 here. And then here we have also the, the hot side and the, the other side. So they're fed centrally. Now notice that this is balanced inherently, but we have an unbalanced plug. Now they do not supply the uh, ferrite beads to put over your uh, coax, but you can just uh, loop up some coax like nine turns, about nine inches in diameter, and that will be good enough to do that. Now there's a little bit of a sealing grease on these things, and so I'll just put that back right there. This is very nice, it's very sturdy. So someone who is trying to put up a very low profile backyard antenna can do it with these. And you can actually, we'll recover that screw later. Now the grease, I'm assuming this might be stainless steel, in which case the grease is on the screws to prevent galling, which is when you put stainless steel screws into stainless steel hole. Uh, after time, they were, will intend to s stick to each other. And when they stick to each other, they're very hard to get out. So the other things you get with this, of course, are your little pen and a chameleon sticker. Okay, so this will go on up a larger mast. I prefer this. I had trouble with the um, MFJ one here because as you see this slips over a one inch mast. Well my masts are bigger than that so I had to come up with an adapter for that. Like I said I lost it when I think it either came over in a storm or something and just bent this hub all to pieces. Whereas if this comes over you may break off a hamstick uh, but hamsticks are very easily replaced. Okay. Okay, so this is the Chameleon Antennas Quad One for $84 plus shipping out of Nevada. Now, um, I would point out that um, W7SSB, who works with them very closely, says that these will be discontinued and they have about 200 left. Why don't uh, you Augies go out there and snatch up those 200 uh, before they disappear? And if they uh, if you come quickly, they'll make some more. They've got their own factory. They can make all of these things themselves. So do I recommend this? Oh, gosh, yes. Um, this can make a dipole. It's the same size for any band because of the loading. Now, like, for example, on uh, 80 meters, it will only cover 25 or 50 kilohertz. And so you may want to tune it for... Uh, the 75 meter band if you want to do a little phone or maybe what way down at the 80 meter end if you want to do uh, some digital work okay there's a lot of digital work down there um, and you can take it down and switch the hamsticks so this makes a very good antenna for um, like POTA parks on the air or uh, I don't think this would be good for mountain toppings. These things are a little bit long, but for parks on the air, you can put this in and be on the air very quickly with very nice antennas. And if you need to switch bands, bring it down and uh, put different hamsticks in it, okay? So there you have it. A very nice uh, method to create a small physical space antenna that is actually better in my experience than say a um, cobweb style antenna. And it would be something that would be work really well in an environment where you've got homeowner restrictions and so on. You could actually set this up on a tripod, work your ham radio for a while and uh, put it back. Uh, let me tell you a little secret about this. Um, 
that different people have tried. Uh, I worked for IBM when it was in Westlake, California. And uh, one of the hams there lived right in Westlake, of course, has zoning restrictions of all kinds and uh, HOA restrictions. And he got permission from the city to put in a crank up tower. So he could crank it up when he wanted to use it, crank it down to where it was pretty low and not bothering any of the neighbors uh, when he was not using it. And he tried something. Every day he used it, he would crank it down a little less. So it stayed up a foot more than it was the day before. And then after the next time he was on, it was a foot higher. And he went to that, it kept doing that until the antenna was up all the time. And nobody stopped to ask him about it or harass him. It's just people got used to it being there and they didn't even see it anymore. So anyway, if you would like to help the, uh, support this channel financially, you can certainly do so by going to dcastlercom support. And until we next meet, 73.